got here a little early to go over some things with Caroline. I've been just kind of playing with the spreadsheet. There are some formulas that corrected. There are some questions that I I had here as far as um, So what, what question I had was the, this town hall stuff. I mean, obviously it's there all as, as capital improvement. And maybe we don't want to talk about this yet. I, I think it's worth everybody understanding okay. what that represents. Yeah. Um, and, and it represents a big, massive, gray, nebulous, we're not sure. And because that's what this building is. So the air compressors is fairly real. There are five of them. Um, two of them are only a couple of years old, but three of them are much older. So um, well past their lifespan. So they should be planned for replacement, you know, very soon. Um, or they're going to be emergency expenditures and they cost... Um, I, I think actually that amount can probably be reduced because we do have at least one new one, so... Um, and these are the five air compressors to compress the space that we're currently using to, to air Upstairs space. and downstairs, yes. Upstairs as no, well. No, not upstairs, but like here, in the here and downstairs. Um, the five air compressors. So it's all for a space that's currently in use. Yes. Yeah. So I think we can bump that down to $100,000, um, hoping that we might even be able to do some other improvements that will likely be necessary in the great unknown of that project when it happens. Um, so Town Hall RPD system upgrades. Um, I, I guess I would... Um, so we just did the town hall boiler. We've got air compressors. We just got a water heater. Um, we're working on some some plumbing upgrades that are that are overdue. So I'm not sure. And, and the alarm, you know, so the fire alarm system is under emergency replacement, like now. They've approved that for now. So then we have the phone and alarm system, which were approved for purchase this current year. So I'm not sure that systems so much is an issue, but definitely structure and painting and other maintenance issues, um, replacing floors and um, the portico that's currently under renovation. We, you know, we're being told now we should have an engineer look at it because those brick supports under the columns are cracked in a way that suggests there's um, structural issues underneath it that should be addressed. I don't know if that's an emergency or can be planned for later, but you know, th this building is so old that um, we don't, there's a lot of, a lot of things we don't know about what it needs. But this is looking at it in a sense that the arc, that the Rawls Police Department will always be down there. Yes, it is. And, and that looking was looking at that facet right now, and that's something we need to be prepared for should it doesn't go any it doesn't change. Well and, and as the select board change they can, you know, have a different idea about that, which is why this spreadsheet is always for them to revise and come up with a final version for the year. But that, you know, the rationale at that time is that if you're if you're putting an, uh, uh, putting money away for town hall maintenance every year in an effort to not be bonding something, mm -hmm. then you're saving money and keeping up on maintenance. Um, you know, our new current chief says that he's fine in the space downstairs. We just need to work on the improvements it needs with the warped floor and the doors that don't close and, and some things like that. So. I don't know how many of those kinds of things rise to this level that they qualify. Like, if we're going to replace all the floors in the building and at the same time regrade the floors downstairs, I would say that's capital. But if we're going to just do this floor because it's peeling this week, then probably not. But we don't, this, on this particular item, we don't have, and maybe this goes to when they get a facilities person and either sharing with the police or somebody specific, there, there's not 
other than what you kind of just put out, there's not a like a list. You know, yeah. I mean, this is a pretty general item that's in here. That's a that's a pretty big number. Yes, and and it's only a pretty big number in recognition of. Uh, we're not sure how bad things could be, yeah. you know. But but that's not, you know, it's it's not a real number. But there's no real way to get a real number without spending some real money to get something quantified. So, in the meantime, the rationale was, um, let's put a significant amount of money away every year so that we're prepared for whatever the big thing might be when it happens. Okay. I agree with the significant number aspect because even in the long run, that's certainly a lot cheaper than building another. Yes. Hall police station, and yes. I think it needs to be a big number so that we're readily depositing into that account. Right, it, and, and recognizing that. that there's a lot of gravity with what could go wrong potentially. And there's some building. substantial work that needs to be done now. They were, I would think, we're grateful that they were even tolerating that space and not demanding a a better space because I mean, you run into you know, air quality issues. It is a basement, you know. I mean, I, I think that we're we're pretty lucky that the new chief is considering working through that with us. See, I kind of took, I looked at it that way also, but but really, I mean, the, the these numbers here, the 10, 30, and the 15, is really part of what the town pays to run this building. So there could be a, a decision, and it's a select board decision, I guess, to look at it to say, we're spending so much money to maintain this building, we could start from scratch and maybe dollar for dollar have something that's going to be better known for the long term and less of a, an issue. So, I mean, that's the only thing I looked at for, and that's why I brought it up. I look at these numbers and they're, and they're kind of big just for doing this building um, versus what it would cost to, what was it, like two million or so? They it was two and a thing. half million. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so, you know, and that goes up every year. Yeah. Um, but it is also a recognition that for as long as we he are here, um, we need to keep the roof on the radar. Like, when does it yep. need to be replaced? And, and when it does need to be replaced, it's going to be a specialist who's going to charge us more than a residential roof. So, mm -hmm. you know, we need to try to plan for that in some way. And that, too, is um, an old, I don't think it's a completely arbitrary number, but it's at least an old number and probably needs to be updated. Yeah, I mean, just compared to the numbers we had about the fire department. Right. Well, well and then the old Melvin Bridge is also a very <laughs> subjective thing that really depends on the will of the select board right. at the time when it comes about because the current road agent wants to approach that in a very different way than, um, than had been planned for. There, there's more than one way to address that deficiency that's looming, mm -hmm. um, and, and that hasn't been decided yet. Okay. I also I also see your point, uh, Joe, and that I, I, you know, right on the fence there too. Where I, I understand it's a bigger initial investment, but everything we put into this is sort of just. I mean, I hate to say throw money away, but um, it's not really, you know, a solid investment of money. But even if we do build another place, we're still going to have to deal with this building. I mean, it's right. a historic building. It's going to have to be maintained. It's going to, you know, you can't just shut off the heat and the water and let it go. Um, but I'm not discounting your thoughts on a new building because you you know you pay for it, you make payments on it, but that's really all you pay because everything is new well, and everything is current. For a while, okay. for a while, but but you should always be planning for the eventuality that even in a new building, the minute it's built, you should be putting away for its new heating sure. system in 15 years sure. or whenever that is, so that you should always be you know whatever the building is. You should always be putting money away for the next thing. And, and it's very distracting when you have a new building because it feels all new and shiny. People lose track of the fact that, oh my goodness, it's 20 years old already, and now everything's starting to go as planned that we didn't really plan for because we're still in the mindset that, oh, we've got this great new building. So I, I would always advocate that, you, you know, whether it's this building or another building, that you're always putting money away for whatever the eventuality is, because time moves quickly and we lose track of those things. And speaking to your point too, without a facilities manager, even if we do, did have a completely new police station town hall, if this roof was bad, we would have to fix this roof. This right. is the town hall. Yes. You have to do that. You can't just let the building mm -hmm. fall into disrepair. And, so and it's a tough situation without a building, a, a, a facilities manager that can calculate what that sort of cost and, well, and, and lifespan is. And, and also we don't know that the facilities director is going to happen. So right. we're, we're stuck right, right. in this limbo about these things until then. 
Um, and, and it's the proposal for the new building on Silver Street was for a police station town hall. And, and you know, it, it's um, what is the right lot? There are not a lot of cho you know to choose from, and is is the right place big enough? Is it located in the proper location? All those things. There are so many variables that take a good amount of effort for and political capital for the select board to figure out. That um, I think it's going to be a good while for any select board, this or upcoming soon select board, to really evaluate okay. options about. You know, the more recent select boards have determined there's either not an appropriate location or the, you know, if you're going to do Silver Street, then you only put a police station there because that's what fits there, in which case now you're um, maintaining two buildings. Yeah. So. Just for lot size and parking required, I mean, and, and building footprint, you know, the old town hall is not a big lot. You know, it's yeah. to, to hold, you know, two, two I, mean, I, don't know, I mean, it's an office as well as police department. That would be tough. I, I think that would be impossible. Yeah. So I think just by the nature of how logistically difficult the situation is to figure out, we ought to continue to put money away for the inevitabilities here. Okay. Well, I'm glad you view it as being needing to be a very big dollar amount. Uh, you know, I think that's being realistic. Okay. So um, that those were that was a question. I just so you I, this source column. To kind of you know to try to break out um, the, the different types of projects that were here. So we talked about SIP, new equipment fund, operating budget, American Rescue Plan. That might be options for all of this. So there are totals across all of that. Just to try to, to break those down. The you know Caroline and I talked about when the fire department was here. Sean was going to send us a. And I don't have any notes on this, but he was going to send us his presentation because I think there might be some things in there but before I get to the fire department. So for the police department, we we removed the digital fingerprint. Mm -hmm. I made the body cameras an operating budget item mm -hmm. and removed the, compu uh, the computer network. So the idea of these operating budget items should be that and, you know, maybe going forward, the department heads can start to take those into account, have a line item that they're justifying individually that they need body cameras. And maybe at some point we'll take the we'll take it off of here until it, but for now it's tracked and it's not part of the um, it's not going to be part it's proposed not to be part of the 2022 SIP uh, proposals. I kind of think that's the right location for it. Yeah. You know, speaking candidly, I think yeah. that's the right location for it. Um, so that was so that was for the police department. We moved some stuff on the fire department, and this is where I need Sean's presentation. There's a couple things in here I wasn't uh, too clear on. One one thing I did do is that it seemed to, in part of our discussion that when the fire department was here, we, we talked about the uh, vehicle wash area, and and really tying that into the septic tank upgrade. Which and I'm sorry, and probably making sense to connect it to the to the uh, the sewer district. Mm -hmm. You know, it seems like it's a little not bit, not much more of a distance. Somebody said right at the, the construction. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I, who knows what those costs are? But I think it. I put it here because I think it's. This seems like in this plan, this American plan, that this would fall underneath those things, from what people have said. Well, so. Um, yes. The, the challenge is that while, while they are, so, so you're mentioning the vehicle wash station and the septic. So septic is covered under the, the ARPA funding if they choose to do that. So it's going to be a while, I think, before the board gets to the point where they're really evaluating how they might want to spend that money. So. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm not sure about time frames, in other words. So as far as the septic system is concerned, that's fine. They can take two more years to decide to use funding or not, oh, whatever. Okay. Um, but in the meantime, that vehicle wash station would be best served being in the location of the septic tank. However, we are required by our stormwater permit to complete that by the end of June. So. The likelihood, you know, people have to move fast if they're going to decide to use that funding, remove the septic tank, build a vehicle wash station in its location, and hook up to 
the district. And by the way, the district also has to determine that it has the capacity to handle the building and, and quote out and, and figure out the engineering to hook it up. So, you know, while ideally those two projects are tied, I don't know if that's um, logistically reasonable. But they're required, like you said, we are required on the new washer system. So regardless, that must happen. Yes. Right. So the question would be, what do we do? We want to leave that as the American Rescue Plan, or, or put that back? To I would still leave it there, just as you've written it. I would just, as far as the narrative goes, the um, the vehicle wash area, um, also, you know, the American Rescue, you know, same funding source, but to, you know, not tie them just because um, the time frame probably isn't going to work out. So, so we can talk about, we hope that works, but really people, everybody needs to move quickly if they're going to actually make that happen in time for the, you know, for the due date, which is kind of sort of flexible, like as long as we can say it'll be done within the next three months, but we started it and we're this far, yeah. you know, we're good. But we have to be, you know, we have to have substantial work done in that regard. We can't, you know, just say, oh, we're thinking about it. But is there the option if, if indeed we do fund it to get reimbursed on the back end after even after it's completed to still go back and present for reimbursement through the that, that fund? Um, so we have half the money already. We can't spend it without a public hearing. So so you know I'm not sure how that works with like so, so we're going to do the project anyway, we're going to fund it, but then after the fact, have a public hearing and say, do we want to reimburse ourselves with this funding? I'm not sure if you can do that, but maybe. But it's very specific what that money must be used for. Yes. And be able to watch for that. Yes, because it's about stormwater related mm -hmm. things, among other things, yes. Okay. So I got the impression, though, that if they did the vehicle wash area without coordinating it with the tie-up or the new septic system, it, it could be extra expenses to do it in a, in a as a, in an uncoordinated way. I, I believe that's yeah. true, and and just extra complicated because where's yeah. it going? Because the logical thing to do if you're not going to do the septic system is to wash trucks on the front ramp and slope it to where the you know, where the front ramp meets the street and at some point have one of those long mm -hmm. drains and then the long drain would, would feed into an oil water separator um, and, then, and then hook into the state storm drain system except that the state said no. Mm -hmm. So, so mm -hmm. now instead you need a place to put a tank, like a holding tank for all this okay. wash, the gray water. And, and that's separate from the septic system. So really they so there's no place to put either a tank or oh, okay. like an oil water separator that goes then into a dry well or, or you know, we, we, we need to start um, figuring out how we're going to do but that. But any money spent on the gray water containment would be money wasted if indeed it turned into a situation with, this, with the um, if that wasn't well, needed because water and sewer took care of it. That would have been money wasted, but it's a timing thing. Potentially, yes, quite so, but except that if you can, you know, build a dry well, then the dry well is potentially less expensive, but that's, like, I don't know where that might fit, but, right. yes. But regardless, I think the water and sewer is going to build on, I mean, I think that your uh, septic cost is tied into your water draw cost, so we would have to determine whether, if indeed we used a, some sort of dry well, some sort of septic a containment of our own for the gray water, so that we would be built on both the use of the water and the disposition of the water. You, you can get a different meter through the district okay. so that you're not built on the sewage of the same as water for outside water. To save money on the sewer bill and still make use of the investment you made in the gray water containment. Right, system. but but those those costs can be separated with a special meter through the district. Yeah. Okay. All right, so I mean, I'll leave it with those source codes. I think from an implementation plan, I'm not even sure. I mean, it doesn't seem correct that the fire department 
is, you know, I guess somebody's got to make a decision to go, hey, we need to bring somebody in to design this and plan it and make a proposal for this. But that's a town decision and that's a It's a town point. decision, but I would say anybody who has reference, you know, like a way to talk about it should be talking about it because um, Stormwater doesn't have any consistent real staff. Yeah. You know, we, we lost our, our volunteer who really... Um, held things together, and you know, I, I certainly know about it, and I know those calendar items. But um, you know, with me leaving, I'm not sure how they're going to manage making sure all of our obligations with that permit are met. So mm -hmm. I'm not sure who else is going to say this. And I think you know, as much as it can be said from different people, um, to keep it on their radar while they're in the middle of you know, a busy transition and budget season and all this other stuff um, is worthwhile. Yeah, okay. Um, wash your other things that came up, I added the um, replace Scott air packs, I think that, that, that guy there. That was the number he gave. I don't know what the numbers, you know, I, what I didn't do at all, like what some of these new things was put the allocation out. I guess I can just Mathematically, take that 112 and just spread it across the 10 years, and that would be reflected. But it is far enough out, and that's something I'm sure we'll visit more involved next year. I mean, right, but, but we should have an I like the place marker. I like yeah. the place marker. Well, yeah. but it would be helpful to have a dollar amount yes. in mm -hmm. each year so that we can better understand what's going on with the bottom line about how much the town should put away into the fund every year. Right. And, and for things like, um, you know, by nature of, you know, maybe we don't need to start funding something until the fourth year of the, of the plan, or, you know, maybe this is getting purchased soon. So, you know, the bottom line fluctuates a little bit. So while, like, the first response gut reaction would be, let's just break it out over 10 years because we're buying it in 10 years, it might be worth putting, you know, different amounts of money to help regulate what's going on in the bottom line of how much money you're putting away. But is that a select board decision or this group's decision? I think it's this board's recommendation in as much as you feel as though you can put in the time to figure it out. And, you know, I, I, so I, I guess um, I, I think it's worthwhile to talk about these, these things tonight. But I think it's, it's most important if we can leave to here tonight with a sense of what are we, and, and, and it's kind of a little bit of chicken and egg, honestly, um, but what are we asking, what are we recommending to the board that they put on the warrant for 2022? Right. Um, and then maybe we can follow up, you know, a little bit later to say, um, while this is going to be a, an $80,000 purchase, we, we've, we're suggesting that, that $60,000 is already in the fund for it, or we're yeah. fully, you know, we can fully fund it, or, or whatever like that. So why don't I, I'll take this approach. I'm going to just do a straight yearly allocation across it. When I think I'm all done with all those, I'm going to look at the bottom number and make sure that these numbers are coming in at around 220, uh, yeah, like 240 relatively flat. in that number. And then where it's not, I'll just make some decisions, especially since it's a few. Years I think that out. would be helpful, and then discuss it with with Kevin and Aaron. Like, what you know, like how is this going, and does this does this make sense? Yeah. And then, well, I, we I'll send it out, but I think in general the um, the general concept will be that um, where is that number here? No. That this that this number here across the years we're going to make it kind of flat. And I mean, it is that way already. Obviously, if I start putting in some of these other numbers, 2022 is going to be up real high. So there's probably going to be a need to take something that has a purchase date in the future mm -hmm. and make it either zero in 2022 and make it more heavier allocation in the future. And just and so that this so that all of these numbers here are as flat as possible. Well, yes, and and so one thing that you might kind of have a values conversation around is column N has two hundred twelve thousand as opposed to the year before, which is two forty nine. Yeah. So so do you want to keep that level and front load it, um, and then maybe decrease some payments after that so right. that. You know, people aren't even thirty thousand dollars. Like, why are we yeah. doing this? Yeah. yeah. So the basically the Warren article should come out somewhere around two twenty five every year. 
maybe with inflation. Um, or how do you, you know, in terms of what, what is being asked just for the SIP? And by the way, it's not even really that number. It's really this column here. This is the total cost. Yeah. These, this is, so going by this, you can see the SIP numbers that go, that are basically right. out there. However, you know, watch the total amount of taxation you're asking for in the year. So it's still relevant, like, like both, you know, they're both relevant. The, you know, we're asking for this much for CIP and that much for the equipment fund. Yeah. So, you know, yep. the, the ARPA funds is, is kind of irrelevant because the money's there, they can spend it any time, they don't have to save for it. Mm -hmm. so, and they, so the other thing about the ARPA funds is that they have to identify how they're going to spend the money by 2024. So okay. it doesn't last forever. And I think this is where consistency amongst this board will also help, and I would look forward to work with me next year going well, is that each year that I've seen to come in, there's always things that get advanced or new items that pop up. So um, even balancing out amongst every year, you know the year you're coming up, when we sit down for 23, there's going to be some big increases right. and some things we have to move around. And like I said, hopefully you're here, but you'll, this is a good learning experience for you as well, and you're doing fabulous. But, um, you know, that, that, that is going to happen. It, it, you know, it's just sort of the, the nature of the beast. Yeah, there'll be some unexpected things. Absolutely, that you'll have to things. shuffle some things around. Right. And, um, and that's why, you, you know, department head input is so critical as to, you know, what has to happen now, what can go a year, what needs to move forward a year. Um, and, and also, Joe, I can't say enough about how valuable it is to have um, a board committee, board member, committee member, or volunteer who has... Excel skills because they don't happen a lot, and and so I, I would I would empower you to play with the spreadsheet and then make recommendations mm -hmm. because if it's not you, it, it might not happen. Mm -hmm. It's not me. Yeah, and listen, I I had a great admin that did all this stuff, <laughs> so I really le I, I learned a lot of it because I wasn't going to necessarily just depend blindly on the numbers that he was putting together. So you have to go through it. But yeah, I, I, can, I can figure it out. So that, and that's not a problem. Um, all right, so, so things like the generator, same kind of deal. I'll, I'm going to just kind of do something to start to fill in the years for these things that are blanks. The other question I had in, in the fire department are these items that have question marks on them. And that's, and that's what made me think I really need Scott's Presentation. I don't know if he yeah. covered some of these things or not, but you know, was like, was the sprinkler system a 2020 a, a prior Warren article? Um, I believe that's going to be its own separate thing that's not happening yet. So the Warren article that passed in 2021 was for the alarm guy. system. Yeah, this this here. This was the that's Warren. So that, so that's yeah. So that's. Um, and it, and it doesn't, you know, smoke detectors is, is part of a, an alarm system. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, so it'll need to be replaced at some point. So in theory, you can put that out maybe 20 years. I, I don't know what to expect for a lifespan for that. For which one, though? Not... For, for, the, for the cell that's highlighted in row 36. Like that question mark, I think you can kind of arbitrarily decide that it's, you know, maybe 20 years, 25 years without better information. As much as I created that, you know, worksheet and hoped that department heads would fill it out with what is the lifespan of this, you know, All right, we, so, we don't have that information. So the Warren article is really only the station monitoring system. I mean, I guess, what is, I thought this was Warren Article 8, and are we saying that there's really something else here that represents Warren Article 8, and this whole thing here is... I don't know what the warrant article number is, but I'll say that that was approved in the 2021 warrant. Right. It says alarm system for the fire department. Yes. So is that this, and, it, and it's 25,000, so that yes. matches this. So yes. should I just change this to alarm system for I the fire department? I think you can, yeah. And, not, and as far as smoke detectors and station monitoring? That, I think that's that all encompassing. That's all part of an alarm system. Okay. It's that... It's part of the infrastructure. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to change this because it'll make. I think that would be less confusing. Yeah. More system. And then we probably want to change 25 to maybe 50 by the time that gets purchased in 20 years, mm -hmm. or something like that. That's probably the more realistic. Yeah. And 
and this is 2022 since um, it was approved or anything? so it was approved in 2021 it'll be like installed in 21 so i would say the, the target purchase year might be 41. Mm -hmm. so so and in that regard like you can leave zeros for this whole 10-year plan and every you know so we're just kind of recording the fact that it exists and it'll need replacement someday and then at some point, the year will come where we say, oh, it's time to well, put some money away for this. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to, well, I guess it can still be a capital improvement. Now. Okay, so. But that's the money you have to budget for. That's already part of the more guy. It's the just, that, that's just a recording function. But like Airpacks filling station, they, they haven't bought this shit. Mm -hmm. um, they have, it's, they do. They, they bought that. That was approved this year. So right. they bought it. So we would change the target year for purchase for replacing them. Yes. From, from so, 2022 to something else. Yeah. So again, I don't know what the lifespan okay, of that so is, but I'll, I would check you know, 15 years, 10, you know, 20, I don't know. Um, um, and then what is it going to cost when that time comes? So, so this is why it would be great for this committee to continue to meet or else for this committee to maybe empower Joe to interact with the fire department with some questions around these things so that we can you know, keep this more up to date than it is. And, okay, so where we have things on here that were actually approved Warren articles, the purpose of putting them on here are not to represent that the money is going to be spent in 2022. Oh, correct. Not at all. But like, it's for the future. Yes, but are we going to make an assessment cost? Yeah, yeah right. Yes. The 55 so, someday it'll go order. bad, and then and we have to plan for that. So it's just recording the fact that now these things are owned, they exist, and they'll need replacing. So you can safely put a target purchase figure outside of the 10 year purview of this plan. Depending on what the item is. Yeah, yeah yes, I'll check so. with the fire yeah. department. See. Um, and then I guess, is it, is it a capital improvement or is it an equipment? At this point, um, I, I, you know, this is just my feeling, but I, I would call that capital, and then, um, you know, I think it's discretionary. So, so let's just have a, a brief sidebar and say that the Department of Revenue does not like our CIP catch-all fund because it's so vague. Yeah. So really, what should happen in a perfect world is that we have an article that redefines CIP to be for, you know, building maintenance items over $10,000 and vehicles over, you know, $15,000, like whatever you want to say about what's covered in that fund. And, and do the, you know, the new equipment fund is, is pretty self-explanatory, it's for new equipment. Mm -hmm. um, and create more funds, perhaps, maybe, maybe the CIP fund doesn't address buildings at all, and, and maybe we should create a separate fund and, and even thus a separate CIP plan that goes with building maintenance and we're putting away for heating and ACs and all the, all the systems and all the buildings in a separate fund. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I just want to bring light to that because somebody ought to remember that and maybe suggest it at some point mm -hmm. that we are, for as long as we operate in this way, we're going to get caught with DRA potentially saying, no, you can't use that funding source. Well, and the majority of what's up there is indeed equipment. When you talk any vehicle, that's equipment. You know, when you talk air practice equipment, sprinkle system, I would think, would be capital. But most, you know, two-thirds of that is indeed equipment. Or you, you can make an argument either way, and it becomes yeah. vague, and, and then you don't really know what DRA is going to say about it. But you ought to, I mean, you've got to be proactive and actually set it up in a structure that they're more readily to accept. Well, and, and all that means seeing. is clarity. What is equipment? Equipment is a vehicle or mechanical device valued between X and Y that performs, you know, such and such functions or something. Or, or equipment means anything that you know is a in a building or you know and has a lifespan of whatever. Like whatever you want to say about defining these terms within that Warren article. And when I say within the Warren article, I don't mean the text of the Warren article, but by reference. Yeah. Okay. All right, so I'll go to the, I'll follow up with the fire department on these. It maybe it depends what's in this presentation and what the detail yeah. might be there. But, I'll but your suggestion would be to sort of transition to that. Absolutely. I, like, like, I think, it you know. Wise, it would be a wise choice as far as a CIP board to 
transition that way. Well, and, and, and especially in light of this spreadsheet getting more complex and more varied projects coming to light, you know, I think the timing is good, if not for 2022, then maybe 23, doing some more in articles for housekeeping to either create more funds and or to specify um, what these things mean. But also educate the select board that we're going to be moving things from CIP budgeting to equipment budgeting on a, on a budget for a department, so it's going to skewer the budget for the department if now they're looking at repairing, you know, replacement costs for some of these items. Right, and then the only other thing I'll say about it is just a reminder that the idea of a capital improvement plan is an idea that is regulated by statute and actually belongs to the planning board, and, and it's not really in the planning board because the planning board doesn't have staff to manage it. Um, and so the select board kind of hosts this committee with a planning board representative, but as soon as this committee starts talking about equipment funds, you know, like, like it, it gets a little bit sketchy around, you know, what is really falling under this plan that is supposed to belong to the planning board and how much of this is just regular ongoing financial management that belongs under the purview of perhaps, you know, to some extent the select board, but also the treasurer, and oh, which is, committee. I mean, you, you know, it's so... All so what you're saying is, by statute, this is this is under plan. Um, so this is a um, it's it's a joint venture, but really yes, if you had to pick up a, a party, it's the planning board because it, it's. It sounds like we have a chair. <laughs> I think that chair would be fine. That chair would be fine. Okay. So. Um, and, I, and I would be available for subsequent meetings, Joe, because I'd like to stay involved. Sure. Um, all right, so on the fire department, I think um, I'm set on that. The uh, transfer, nothing on here. I guess again, it comes down to these question marks here. That's so that's a brand new one. So that's a ways out. So whether it's a question mark or anything, uh, that's a question to mark that in reasonable thinking, it's probably going to be outside of the. Yeah, yeah, maybe that's a, that's an understanding. Or maybe something other than a question mark, well, like a you TBD have, or something. Well, you have the greater than 2031. So yeah. 2031 is as far as the plan goes, and you yeah, can just put something beyond that. You know, that I think that's know. right. I like that. I think that's a better thing. That gets rid of the question. question it's a question mark is which is something you may do also on the air packs and everything under yeah as well. Yeah. Yes, I'll I'll do that. Uh, all right. So in the transfer deleted the forklift. Change the horizontal baler to equipment from from uh, that. All right. So the other thing I'm, I'm working on just doing some different totals across here, so that you can see that this is the total SIP equipment fund, and all these different things here. This would be by year of of what is. Things that are in 2022 that have some kind of fund allocated to it in terms of, of, uh, of a savings, let's call it, that's technically what, what should be there. And, and Caroline and, had, and I had some other discussions on this. I have to think a little bit more. Right, that's a contribution directly from tax dollars that's required. That so, so that, that's, that's a, yes, that's taxation to take care of all the payments that we are putting away in 2022 toward right. various projects. But it's not reflective of what you're necessarily going to spend from the fund for those projects yes. or what is already in the fund for various projects. Right. It's, 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 a, it's a required deposit that's going to need to come from taxation. Correct. To into this fund into the purview yes. of CIP. Just like the equipment fund, too, that's also monies that's going to have to come from taxation that we're going to have to take control over, for lack of a better word. Um, and, and be able to earmark and disperse accordingly. It may not even be spent. It may just sit in, the, in an account for 10 years. But Well, right, because there may be nothing equipment-related happening right. for the next few years. But that's us budgeting out. Yes. So, so, Joe, I would encourage you, when you speak to the select board, to also reference the equipment fund. And, and from the budget committee perspective, make sure that when the town is presenting 
the budget that they have a warrant article for both CIP deposit and equipment fund right. deposit. Which, which they did in 2020. Well, they did, yeah. but I'm not sure who's going to manage it or how oh. it's going to be managed or if, it, if they're going to yeah. you know, lose sight of that. Yeah, I mean, it's almost like this should have a warrant article, this should have a warrant article, this is, hey, department heads, keep track of that. This yeah. is just kind of keep track of it for some time in the future. These are kind of items that might require something. And, even, and this is no budget implication. So, yeah, Except so. just to make sure that the select board is aware that we hope that you use those funds so that then we can take it off of this plan. Yes. Well, if, if they decide not to use this, this 35000 is going to go either most likely up into the SIP. I mean, it's right. You, 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 you get the taxpayers to make... I, I, Isn't that earmarked funds that have to be used for specific purposes? You just yeah. can't take that thirty-five and put it. Right, but they are qualifying purchases of the yeah, okay. yeah. okay. the, the So the, I mean, the key to the select board is that if if you don't put a plan together to spend to solve these two items that we put in as 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 American Rescue Plan, this thirty-five thousand is going to move up to there. So you can have it come out of taxation, or you can come have it come out of the yes. federal government program. Yes. Okay. And they need to make that decision sooner rather than later because right. that's what they're going to ask for. Like, you know, when they decide what to put on the warrant, they need to know that, of course, they decide how much money to put on the warrant, but, you know, what's the impact of that decision? Are they missing this and we're underfunded by $35,000? Right. You know? Right. Um, okay. What else do I have? We talked about. Why are you also talking about presenting this as like boy this coming week, right? Um, the next meeting is, is the Wednesday the 8th at 6 p.m. It doesn't mean you have to be there at 6 p.m. It doesn't mean you're available on the 8th, but um, yes. And then they're also meeting on the 13th. Now, the schedule that John has, John Woodway has for the budget committee is we're um, doing this at the budget committee on like the 30th. The 29th, yeah. It's, well, it's somewhere, uh, so yeah. is the process, that has to happen before the select board, or does not matter the sequence? That's a really good question, and, and the answer kind of depends on the select board, and it varies every year according to who's on the select board. So on the one hand, um, the budget committee has a right to know what this committee thinks, just mm -hmm. like the budget committee has a right to know what the police chief and every other department head is asking for, regardless of what the select board is approving. At the same time, the budget committee needs to be really clear about the difference, and it's helpful if when you present the CIP that the select board ex officio can also say, yes, we're doing that, or no, we've decided to adjust something and do something else instead, or, or not this part, or, or something. So that, you know, it, it provides clarity for the budget committee, because otherwise, having two conversations around every proposal becomes confusing around what really are we evaluating, because in the end, they're evaluating the select board's proposed budget, which is not necessarily what this group is presenting. So, in, in the best case scenario, you will present to the select board sooner rather than later this committee's recommendation for 2022. And then the select board will have time to deliberate over that recommendation um, and be ready on the 29th or whenever that is to engage in that conversation in a meaningful way around what the select board's decided about this recommendation. Okay. So it sounds like the select board discussion should happen before the budget committee. Um, it's better that way, yeah. yes. But but I guess what I'm saying is, even if that is able to happen, it's still worthwhile for the budget committee to say that, although with all the needs of the town, the select board is deciding to put less money in than we're recommending, we just want to note that the committee would have you note that we're still asking for, you know, we've asked for this much money because this is what it really needs and this is the impact of doing it the other mm -hmm. way, so, so that they're aware of the alternative even though, you know, ultimately the select board gets to decide what's on the warrant. Okay. 
So is there your thoughts on presenting this next week, where maybe we have a little more information we'd like to discuss? Would we let it throw off a week? Not the eighth, but the fall, the next meeting, the, or not, not not Wednesday or Thursday of next week. Put it off till the next scheduled meeting, which will still be before the 29th. So we will be presenting to the select board before we select present the budget. You could. It's just a function of, regardless of when this group presents to the select board, has the select board had enough time to deliberate over this? in conjunction with everything else that they're deliberating over that's budget related to then know what they're going to be requesting of the town at the budget committee meeting. So, you know, they, they have a lot of digestion to do around budget proposals and they won't, they're only just doing presentations now. So they're behind schedule for where we right. typically are. And I, I think this is going to be challenging unless they're just going to be saying yes to everybody's proposal. Um, so I, I, don't, I don't know how they intend to handle it. But that. once we present those are numbers that sort of stuck, stuck in stone, we can't, we can't modify it at that point, right? The numbers we present, that is it, right? Well, well, yes and no. I would say as soon as this group makes a recommendation, the more critical thing is what are you suggesting that the board purchase for how much money on the 2022 warrant. That they need to know sooner rather than later, along with, of this $80,000, all of it's coming from CIP, or we're only putting $60,000, you know, what, what, whatever that is. That's the information they need right away. And then that's the official CIP recommendation. Subsequent to that, though, there's not a, re I, I think it's very valuable for this committee to continue to meet and talk about um, how can we make this spreadsheet better and, and when really are we going to replace that piece of equipment and, and continue to... Outside of 2022 recommendations. Yes. Outside of that. Yes. I think that's completely appropriate, but just understanding the that the 2022 answer. recommendation that's is the stuff out there. that's pending right now, and then we can work with it. Not to mention that if the select board disagrees in any way with this committee's recommendation, this committee, particularly Joe, your help with managing this spreadsheet to reflect their decision and creating what will be the official version of the CIP to go in the town report, because ultimately that's the spreadsheet deadline is um, in, in January for the town, and, and even if you miss January, and, and often we miss January, the deliberative session in February um, we're, we're at that time printing the town report, and then we really need an official select board approved version of this spreadsheet to put in the town report. But what should go in that town report, I, I, I never looked back at the prior one. It shouldn't be this whole thing. It should just be the capital projects. I mean, did they put this whole thing in before? So they did, the stuff, because the that's the, the form in which it existed. Yeah. But if it exists in such a way that the spreadsheet's really CIP items, and then we have a different sheet for equipment fund, then I'm not sure that that's really required. But I would also argue more information is better. So if we have a sp separate okay. spreadsheet for the equipment fund, then I would, I would argue for sharing that anyway. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the, the, the true binding information is indeed 20, 2022. Even if we put this in the final report, we're really only bound to what we suggested for 2022. 2023 is still subject to change when we hear from the department heads, correct? Of course. Yeah, of course. Okay, so the real binding, what we're really talking about is 2022. Everything else just helps subsequent the, the, CIP boards. Right, so, so the first thing is the recommendation for 22 purchases, and then after that working on what does this spreadsheet work look like, and then does the select board want to modify this spreadsheet in any way, and then it's helpful if this, you know, if Joe, you can manage that, but also for the CIP committee to officially know right now that even though we need $193,000 to, to go in that fund, the select board's only going to put 150. So now that you know that, and that's an official decision now, you can start now on doing yeah. the spreadsheet updates to reflect the impact. So with that said, Kevin, and if 2022 is our main focus, do we do we want to just make a quick spin through these things for 2022? And I, say, I'd be comfortable with that. You know, and definitely, and, and focused only on the items that are, are capital improvements. Yep. Okay, so 
That's seventy-four grand for the government. Oh, sorry, you fifty-five yeah, grand. Yeah, right. yeah, and like you go that. into the police department. Um, well, well, so those are deposits in, but I would say, what are the purchase years? What are the purchase year recommendations? So, for example, the um, I don't think there's anything in that first section that anybody asked to have purchased for this year, um, but the um, no, that's this number here, the one ninety. No, no, yes, that's money putting away. So, so I think that. Oh, okay, no, that's the seventy-five thousand plus the police department, right? This this is the one that says, um, look, whatever you have in this column, if you have a C in the source, and it's twenty twenty-two in the purchase target year, it's seventy-five thousand okay. okay. plus the police department. Because remember, I was I was saying I haven't figured out from a spreadsheet standpoint how to handle this biennial. Because even the 2020, anything outside of the 2022 target year, that's subject to change when we get together next year. Well, so, so yet again, though, it's important to have an official version of the year. And then, and then, you know, it's up for, you know, every year there's an official version and every year there's a process. So, so there's always a point in time with, you know, you know, the 2022 official version will reflect the what the select board does with this group's recommendations and what the select board does with what this group recommends the payment plan to be. Mm -hmm. yeah. Actually, let me correct what I said, because this goes back to what we were talking about just before the meeting started, is that there, there, is, there are allocations right now that are being proposed for 2022 for all of these projects. For projects that are outside of 2022 for yes. this year. Yes. It's deposits for future payments. Yes. That's, um, yes. Yeah. So this is where the color coding for purchase year comes into play. And those column H target purchase year, that's why you need those columns. You know, no, but I, I thought that the purpose of the Warren article, I thought, was to set aside money for future purchases. Yes. Mm -hmm. And isn't that what, let's say, column I is for 2022? Yes. So, so we're talking about two different okay. things. Um, and, and so to some degree, we can't figure it all out tonight. Because if, if the payments are not all evened out in a way that this group agrees makes sense, then you don't really know that it's 193.5 that you're going to ask the select board to put in the fund. Because maybe we're going to spread money out differently or allocate more on the purchases for 2022. Right. right. So, so we don't really know that. But, but right now, that's what the spreadsheet reflects. But so also, if, yeah. if we don't get the 193 and the select board decides on 150, then we need to go look, look back at things that aren't in... 22 and you know, change your purchase and that's yes. when I say well we, you know yes. we're, we're, we're 20 grand short so we'll remove this 10 remove this 10 and in yes. the following years the 10s now become 15. Right and so at that point you're working on the 2023 draft version that's right. of this spreadsheet. Right. Which we've never done. We've right. Done but would plan, be prudent I think. It would be prudent. So, uh, so at, at this point in time other than the few projects that I'm going to make an educated guess on the best allocation that should be for 2022 and into the future, balancing out the total number that is there. If I were to look at this, I would say that the select, that there should be a Warren article for 2022 for $193,000. Well, hold the phone. Be before I think you can say that in confidence, you need to take that $99,000 yes. and distribute it $99,000 in the fund that is not allocated. That's this number um, over here. Yes, it changed to 99. Scroll up a little bit. There you go. So that was That's 68. There. Yes. Yeah, it was 68, and then we removed the fingerprinting thing because the chief doesn't need that. So that changed that money because there was money allocated toward that. So mm -hmm. now that amount of money needs to be allocated in different projects in column T. And then that will calculate how much money we need in future to raise, which is column U. Right, so you don't have to spend that 99 in this calendar in, in yeah. 2020. In you, it, it's not about spending, it's about allocating. allocating. Yeah. But it may affect 
that 193 because maybe you don't need 193 because something you're going to buy is now fully funded from that 99. Right. Um, so so we don't really need to put you know like like say for example there's a project that you have to put five thousand dollars into in the same year that you're purchasing it in 2022 because you don't, you haven't put enough money away so far. So so you're putting five in, you know, part of the 193 is that you're putting $5,000 on this project that you're also purchasing this year. I see. So that's plausible as the spreadsheet reads right now, but now you've got this $99,000 and now you're going to wipe out that five. We're not going to raise five, the f we're going to delete the $5,000 from the 193 because we've allocated five from this 99 on that project for, for 2022. Right. So, so, so it can affect that 193 in that way. So do we have a, a discussion point for tonight to decide as we look through the things here in 99, I'm sorry, for 2022, is there anything we want to take some of that 99,000? Well, so, so if I may rephrase your question, um, if column H reflects the target purchase year that's recommended by the department heads, mm -hmm. then, and, and the item is not fully funded, do we want to supplement that? So, yes, right. there so you that go. guy would be a perfect one. Exactly. Yeah. So, so you have to put, add, so that, that $20,000 is now part of the 193 that we have to ask the town for. So you're putting money in and money out in the same year. Yeah. Or you can take 20000 from that ninety nine. And now you only need to raise 173,000 this year, right, right. or you're still raising 193, but you're allocating it differently. Just to point clarity, you said that the orange is the equipment fund. Okay. Okay. And and these highlighted cells, in is theory, it? is the purchase year and should match whatever the year is in column H. So it's a visual representation that matches column H. So that's why you can recognize that we don't need to put money away in that purchase year or we're putting money away, including the purchase year. Right. That's why those cells are highlighted. Yeah. So this just, this one here, what does that one mean? So, so I, would, I would clear that color and put the color on the column before, on the cell before, to the left of it, yeah. Okay. But looking at the roof, that says that we need it in 25, so we need to be serious in 23 and 24 in 22 to be able to hit that because we're not looking at spending any, allocating any money in 25. That's the year we need to spend that money. Yeah. So we're trying to provide. Ideally, okay. yeah. but worst case scenario, we're, you know, putting some money in and taking it out in the same year for the same thing. I just got confused with the orange being the, the purchase year. It's really not. No, it's, it's the, the single cells, yes. And so the way to remember that is that the whole row is not the purchase here. Obviously. Yeah, right. But it's a way to help remember it. Whereas the green, because not on this screen, but if you're looking at it, it's really a green cell. So the green is the year you have to come up with the green to that we're seeing as yellow. Yes. So, Joe. Um, has column H been updated to reflect the purchase years requested by the department heads? As best I have, except for the ones, well, we're saying this guy here is, the, 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 I think this we're saying is going to be TBD. Well, and it's, I don't think that it was requested for 22. So oh, okay. So then that's, that's, one, that's right. That's one of the items I got to see what Sean has and then, and then go back. And we're suspecting that the um, air packs have greater than a 10 year life, so that would be greater than. And that's right. They bought in this case here, since it was a 2021 Warren article. These were already priced. right. So all three of those those cells could read greater than 2030 or greater than 2031, whatever is appropriate there. And I think that is a reasonable ex lifespan for. Well, time, and right? then next year when you meet with the department heads, you can get better yeah. clarity around mm -hmm. that. The, okay, so the sprinkler system is something new. I got to see what those are. So, I mean, in terms of to what what that ninety grand or so would be used for, we 
we take this vehicle replacement, I mean, this, well, this is paying for something that was purchased in the past, or, or were they saving for the future of these cars? Well, so the goal was to, um, next to each vehicle, put its purchase year so that, you know, as we look at this, we can see, oh, it was purchased in 2018, so if it lives for 10 years, it can, you know, that would be 2028, or maybe we can get 50, and it helps you figure out a reasonable purchase year for that. Um, I, we did that a lot in the highway department, but I don't think, you know, for sure we don't have that for cruisers because once we buy cruisers, they're not really on here, you know, there are so many of them and they're, they're, hit, they're, they're funded in this just one line, mm -hmm. so, so those aren't represented in that way. But as much as it's possible for, um, less so for the equipment, but more so for the bigger ticket items to indicate the year of purchase. Mm -hmm. Um, but there's always going to be an entry in that for the cruisers because we go through them so much. There's so many of them. We're getting away from leases. Well, and because every you know every year or every other year, so frequently you're you're getting a new one and disposing of one. So with this ninety thousand or so, I mean, if if our if our total funding right now is 193 and yes maybe you could reduce that as far as the warrant article and we're, we're talking about maybe targeting 200 or so in that range for a warrant article does it make sense to use that 93,000 or whatever it was I would think it's entirely though right well like so so fund. one big caution here though like although I like you know your train of thought makes some sense but um so say, for example, you put all of that $99,000 um, in 2022. So, so again, don't confuse 2022 as a funding year versus 2022 as a purchasing year. Mm -hmm. So as far as 2022 goes for a funding year, I would discourage you from using all the $99,000. If you want to use all of them for 2022 purchase year items, so that things can be funded entirely from CIP and not taxation. I think that's worthwhile and worth talking about. But if you're just going to put, you know, a hundred thousand dollars instead of one ninety three, and then the following year put ask for two hundred, yeah. then the voters are going to, you know, yeah. scream. But we're also heading into a period of reassessment too, correct? That's. Um. I. I. Um. That's a distracting conversation. It is that, very distracting. Well, well, and what I mean by that is I'm not sure that it's, um, it doesn't particularly pertain because ultimately you have to raise as much money as you have to raise. And, and when values change, it doesn't mean all of a sudden windfall to the town. It means the town still is only going to raise as much money as it yeah. needs. In other words, mm -hmm. more I, I or less that. vaguely, as I much as values that. go up, the tax rate goes down. Right. Not exactly. No, it's not a windfall either. It doesn't, doesn't mean that. Yeah. However, because especially next year with what's going on in the real estate market and people's values increasing so very significantly um, and the confusion that always comes with that about people, you know, since, since taxes will always go up, one would, you know, I, I'll, I'll just go out on a limb and suggest that taxes always go up. Um, when, when you complicate that with a reval year, people associate their increase in taxes to the reval, even though it has nothing to do with the reval, it has to do with how much is the town asking to spend. And not, by the way, the town, because let's also remember that the town is only 20% of the tax rate. We have other taxing entities. so. So that shouldn't be even something that factors into us. We're not going to come into a windfall in 2023 and have plenty of money. No. It's just not going to be the case, right? No. Right. But because of all of that consternation going on around that topic, um, it's not necessarily the year to ask for more and add to that yeah. in that way. You know, it, it's, you know, if there's ever a year to be discretionary and ask for less, I would say do it every five years on the reval year. 
which would lead me along the lines of what you were mentioning is not to exhaust that 99,000 in this calendar year. Absolutely. Because not. the next year it's going to be a dramatic increase. Yes. And it's only because we use the surplus that's available. Right, right. So if you're going to use it, use it for purchases, but don't use it in that 2022 column, you know, for, for funding. Yes, yes. For, for, yes. Does that make sense, Joe? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. This, this number here I have, based on what we talked about before the meeting, I have to rethink how to do this calculation. which would be uh, trying to get to the number that this is the number of, this is the amount of money that would come out of the SIP trust fund to pay for the things that have to be paid for in 2022. And the calculation would have to adjust that. But still, uh, maybe I'm being thick here, but this is the Warren article for 2022 so, to so set aside funds for the future. Yes. Okay. Should they agree on that amount? Should they? Should they right, right, right. And, and what we talked about was making this whole, for the SIP, this whole row as balanced as possible. So we're not going from 240, you know, from 193 to 240. Right, that, exactly. You know, and where there are things that we could maybe not set aside money in 2023, but set aside it in, um, or maybe not a set aside money in, in, two, four, in 2025, but set aside some maybe in 2027, if mm -hmm. a particular item goes out that far. So you get right. a level funding across here. Right, right as much as possible. Yeah. So, so in light of that, what I would suggest is that we go above and look up higher about uh, what is slated to be purchased and and you know if we were to recommend you know so vehicle exhaust system are we going to recommend it and if so is it already fully funded or how much funding does it need and then if we're fu if we're going to recommend it and if it's not fully funded do we want to put some of the 99 against it to make it fully funded but regardless our 193 really stands out as a very low year compared to what's coming Yes, so and I would we, also we wouldn't argue... want to talk about maybe bumping up some of the allotments within this year to sort of balance it out and make and yeah, maybe if it gets kicked down by select board, then we can go back and rework it. I, I would always argue for, you know, because of the four and a half million dollars worth of assets represented in that fund, I would never recommend going down in a payment but staying level from one year to an yes. next because you know, it, it just adds to the fluctuation well, if you ever go down. That's why the 193 skate concerns me. Well, but I but I still think it's premature to be talking about the 193 when we've got this 99 that needs yes. to be allocated. Yeah. So so I would, you know, let's allocate the 99, and then we can see if 193 is 190, still 193, or is it something else? Well, why do we have to allocate the 99? But a portion of it, whatever we decide is a portion of it. Because if you don't, then you are potentially recommending the select, to the select board to purchase these five items next year. And um, but so, so this one is only half funded with CIP, and this one only has $5,000 coming from CIP. This one doesn't have any money coming from CIP. This one's fully funded from CIP. That's why. So, so it, while at the same time, you have $99,000 sitting there that doesn't represent anything, that's not working toward anything. So, and, and maybe the, the answer is to, 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 to do that, to present these five things that are in varying degrees of CIP funding, while at the same time, future years are better funded. We can certainly do that. I just think that's a discussion point around, you know. So, so this has a lot of moving parts. And, and you have to nail something down in order to make the rest of the moving parts clearer, if that makes sense. So, so if you're going to allocate the 99, that makes the funding, the 93, 193, much firmer. Like, like, because, because, because now it's no longer available. It's wherever we decided to put it. So then it's either 193 for real, or it's not because it got adjusted by our action of allocating the 99, or we can choose the items to be purchased, and then when we choose those items, 
we can look at how well they are or aren't funded and, and choose to allocate the 99. You, you see what I mean? Or we can decide the 193 is really 200 and then move backwards and reallocate money up. You know, like we, we have to pick an approach, I guess, is what I'm saying. But with the 199, we can take some items for purchase year 2022. We can fully satisfy that debt and fully take that off the CIP completely because we have funds to do that. Yeah. And I'm not yeah. talking the entire 99, but this is a $20,000 items that we can fully satisfy, fully fund. I, I would make year. an argument for either using the 99 to fully or more fully fund recommended purchases or to put it in allocations for future years, but to definitely do something with the 99 and not just leave it as this separate amount floating around. Right. Future, future allocations to things that have a sooner year of purchase than I, I would agree with that. Does that make sense, Joe? Not yet, no. Okay, so, I'm gonna have to think about so, it. so like, think about it this way. Do we want to ask the town for $193,000 when we have $99,000 there that we don't know what its function is? We don't know that it's allocated toward this or that, that it's helping to fund something this year or next year or some other year. Mm -hmm. It's just sitting there. It's too big a question just to leave it's, it, you know? I, I, I would argue that we're asking money from the taxpayer for a purpose, and that purpose is to partially fund, you know, A through Z in some way. Yeah. And, and so now that we've gotten, you know, our request has been fulfilled, and the net result of that is 99, that we ought to close the loop on that and allocate those funds in some way, even if it's not exactly as intended last year, although it already at least mostly is. I guess I'm, I'm hesitant. Oh, shoot. No. I'm, I'm just thinking, I'm wondering about how solid of a number this really is, I guess. And, and because I haven't backtracked it to the CIP balance, well, it, it agrees with isn't that what column C is? Like that 99 there? So I would, you know. Which, which one? Right there next to total. What is that? That's 2018, sorry. So we're on the wrong year. All right, so if you can scroll down. So this is 2019. So and we asked, I, I don't know that we actually asked for 220. Um, and that I, I know that we didn't ask. Oh, those are allocations out. I'm sorry. We asked for 179.4. I'm sorry. I'm just processing out that. Okay. So that, that 179 is how much we asked for by taxation, and then that next column, C, is how much was spent on those various projects. Actually spent in 2019 for these things. So these were all warrant articles. Correct. And okay. so we spent $220,000 this year while only putting back in the account 179. Yeah. Right. But that's 19. Right. So if you scroll down, then... You can see what happened in 2020. The generator is zero because we didn't actually do that in 2020. We're hoping to do that this year until the funds were rolled over. Oh, we spent less than we had allocated to us. Yes, and that part's good. And then, and that may be lending itself to And also in 2020, that's why we're sitting at 99,000 surplus. And also because we deleted the fingerprint machine right, yeah. which had allocations on already it. happened right so at the end of 2020 this was that 391 is the balance the total balance for the CIP yes so that balance has to agree with that spreadsheet in some way and in theory it's not by 99 But the 99 is explained to the surplus. Well, it is that it is surplus, yes. So, so in other words, we have more money in the fund than the spreadsheet is currently recognizing that other tab of the spreadsheet. So we need that 10-year plan to reflect that it knows that it has $99,000 more in it. Right, and that's we had talked about that that there were some numbers that. 
um, we had said that this total funding, this column here, X, should equal D. And we, we saw a couple that that wasn't true. Yes, and if not, then, you know, we have a problem. I have to, I have to so yeah. it might be helpful, Joe, if you and I did maybe a video chat with this. And, and, you know, you can share your screen and we can maybe look at how columns S, T, and U, and X, you know, how those, how those function as relates to, um, you know, yeah, and yeah, exactly. And, and, and the purchase here, you know, and, and we can kind of work more on how the spreadsheet functions. But maybe you can even talk, bounce back and forth some suggestions of taking a portion of that 99 and satisfying some total purchases in the year 99 that we then could sit again one more time before, yeah. you know, Aaron obviously based on your schedule, but before the Wednesday presentation. And or it, or I think enough. it's even safe to present to the board on the 13th as much as that's not ideal. Like they've got enough other things going on that... So not next week, but the... Um, Monday the 13th. I, you know, and I don't mean to, to speak for them except to say, um, you know, they're busy and this is important, but if, if you don't have something to say, you don't have something to say. And, and, you know, it's better that you really know what you're proposing than, than not. So, so I agree. I think it's worth having a hypothetical conversation around, you know, assuming Joe, you know, does the reconciliation and, and comes to believe in the 99, this is what we would do with it. So that um, after you go through that exercise, mm -hmm. it, you can at least come back to the group and say, okay, I guess we're going forward with the plan, or else, no, what do we do now that we're $20,000 short of that, or, or whatever you find it to be. Yeah. Well, there's some good questions. That's why I thought Wednesday was a little, you know, a little optimistic to present because we still haven't even talked about the, the 99, but I'd be open to hearing suggestions of that. I think we're all on the same page as far as the, you know using a portion of it to fully satisfy any 2022 purchases to remove them from that or offsetting, bulking up some allotments to something coming up in the next two to three to four years to at least use a portion of that to at least yeah, see, that doesn't really help with the 193 well, being more in line with the 220s and 240s that are downstream. So I think maybe the better approach at this point is, if, if you all agree, that, that I'll send the board an email and let them know that this group is still working. But um, in order for the select board to have enough time to deliberate over what this group is going to suggest, that... Um, maybe we communicate with the budget committee that 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 September 29th meeting is not going to work for the select board to present to present CIP to the budget committee, and then they can work that out and plan ahead to be ready to talk about some other department with the budget committee and and try to swap that around. Yes, I think that's realistic. Aaron, are you good with that? Yeah. I mean, I, I personally have some constraints in September as far as time, depending. So what were the, so it, it sounds like we, we, there's still work to, there is, there is still work to do on this. And we need to be at the, we want to be at the select board before we, we before this, before this goes to the budget committee, because the select board should be, this is what we want to do. And the question is, what are the dates for the, for me anyway, what are the dates for the select board? Their current, so their next meeting, you know, on the 8th next week, because the holiday is, is throwing that week off. And then they've created an unscheduled meeting on the 13th, which is a Monday, that's an off week. Um, I can't make that. I can't be. Oh, um, I'm out of town on the 13th. Um, and then, and then th after that week, I'm gone. Um, yeah. But the 20th. But you can come back as a as a resident to, on this. <laughs> <laughs> there is no resident spot, and, and that's not to say that the select board can't create such a spot. Yeah. Um, but my my 
you know, my oh, locality okay. and availability in, in weekday evenings may not yeah. may not facilitate that very well. However, Joe, I'll do what I can to, you know, correspond with you and give you my personal email address and try to help you figure this out. As well, I think tomorrow's going to be a good day for me to work on this because it's supposed to be kind of crappy. So I don't know if, if you can have, if you want to give me Sean's email or if you have his contact just um, so everybody's first name dot last name. So he's S H A W N dot Glidden G L I D D E N I D D E N correct G L I D D E N yep. at Rollinsford dot N H dot U S. Okay. And I've made myself a note to pass along with presentations as well, but I think it's worthwhile for you to connect with him and, you know, ask some of these other questions too. Like, in, and maybe he can respond to you before I get you these yeah. presentations, but yeah. you can also, you know, ask him some of these other questions. So go back to the select board. So 9-8, doesn't... Um, and then 9-20, they're meeting on the 20th. Okay. However, you know... They're also creating other meetings for other purposes, and I wouldn't want to speak to them to speak for them to say that they wouldn't be willing to make some other, you know, off schedule meeting because there are certainly enough agenda items to warrant not just meeting for this but other things. So they've, they've got a lot going on. Yep. The other thing, if you're having scheduling issues, is, is that I might, if, if the committee is, is amenable, um, I might suggest that you just write up the recommendation of the committee and say, you know, we're still working on the spreadsheet, but we're suggesting that you purchase the following things, you know, and, and they are fully funded or not by however much money. And, um, and that we're requesting that you put X number of dollars back into the fund. I um, like that for 2022, that gives them a real, a real picture of what's pending immediately. Right, um, and that, that's what they most immediately need to know. And, and even if you, we, if, if you only get as far as please purchase these items and then we figure out what the bottom line is that we need them to request a little bit later, you know, ideally they need that in order to evaluate the whole big picture of how much are they asking for by taxation. But I, I don't know how much that's even on their radar, frankly. Um, you know, they're, they're all pretty new to this and the, and the putting together the, the, the revenue and the capital and the, and the yeah. operating is, is kind of a lot to wrap your head around and how they connect. I'm trying so, to understand what you just said there. Right. So, so, so my point is, in light of scheduling issues and the delay of this committee, it might be best if this committee can at least get to the point to say, um, we're recommending that you buy these five things for this amount of money, of which this amount is funded already in, in the fund. Mm -hmm. and, and, and if you are able to additionally say, we would like for you to request X number of dollars from the taxpayer. For 2022. For 2022 only. That's what the, those pieces of our information are what they immediately need. Right. right. But, but you say, that's money to be a lot. That's not so, money that needs to be spent. That's money we can a lot. And if that number changes down, then we can change the allotments. Well, that's, right. But they need to know what, what you're asking for yes. to be put on the warrant so that they can try to evaluate the big picture of what is the tax burden. Um, right. that they're going to be putting on the warrant altogether. You know, like five items that are not at all by taxation because they're funded through the fund, plus this one warrant article by taxation, or is it five things that are only partially funded by CIP, do have an immediate tax impact, plus this other large amount of money. Um, so so if, if you can try to target your efforts on do you really agree with the idea that, that they should buy the vehicle exhaust system in 2022? And, and if so, that's a, you know, a relatively new item, so I'm, I'm sure it's not fully funded. Um, 
so if you go all the way to the right, it'll tell you um, how, how, yeah, how funded that is. So there's already $30,000 put away for it. Mm -hmm. So as it stands right now, you really only need to come up with $25,000 to make yeah. it happen. Yeah. So now you have $75,000 that you can allocate on other projects and allow that to be fully funded if you agree with the idea that that should be purchased in 2022. No, but no, there's 30 there and it costs 75. Yes, the, so the, the X the column. 20 is coming from the additional. The oh, I'm sorry. The yeah, 20 that's coming period. from the You're original right. so, so deposits over the correct. front. Correct. So it's years. actually 45 that you. But need. that pro that that item got moved advanced to correct. 2022 purchase year. So it's it's. Right, because there's 20 in that in that. Right. In there that is no other. All the deposits are zero. Where previously, right. before this was worked, there was probably fives and tens. Right. In that there. there's there's 20 for the for that 10 year. So so as Kevin said, that column S represents payments over the 10 year period, and there's only that one payment in 2022 but it's for $20,000. So you need the amount in column U, which is 25, plus you need the amount in column S, right. which is how much we would have been putting away if we could buy it later. Um, and that plus what you already have, column T, um, equals column X, the purchase price. But so, we do have enough in that, in the nine to fully satisfy the WASP system, but that also has the other uh, issues of dealing with the water and, and, and the septic on that. Well, path. and I would really try, I would really argue hard to not pay for that out of this fund if we can use yeah. the ARPA funds to do yes, it. Yes, yes, yes. But there you go. Like, that's a conversation point for the select board that we're going to suggest unfunding the money allocated for the vehicle wash station and put that 25 on the vehicle exhaust system instead, mm -hmm. and then you only have to come up with $20,000. So now we're going to take $20,000 from that 99 and make the vehicle exhaust system fully funded with the vehicle wash station coming from ARPA funds, and now you have $75,000, uh, $79,000 left that you can still allocate on other projects. But the wash station has a deadline where the exhaust system doesn't. Agreed, but to my mind, the hiccup with that is not the funding source. Um, and I would even argue, let's not wait to put that on the warrant, but let's keep it you know, outside of the warrant so that we're not waiting until March to get a decision yeah. about it. And instead, if we use that, the ARPA funds, then we just need a public hearing and we can start moving in that direction at any time. So just so confirmed, this 30000 here, if I went back and looked at prior years, we would see that 30000 was set aside. Mm -hmm. so Not on this spreadsheet, but in prior versions of this spreadsheet, because you yes. can't see prior to 22. Well, I, I wonder, I mean, I'm only going by the columns that are hidden here. I don't know if I, I don't want to. Well, right, right. If you have extra columns, then there you go. Yeah. Right, I'm yeah, but if you have extra column. hidden columns, yeah. then you may be able well, to I didn't see hide them, but maybe I want to say that, that, that when you first handed off the very first meeting we had, when we had a color sheet and a black and white sheet, I want to see that I say that I saw that where that thirty come from. I think, I, I think I did see that. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that's what happens in the transition from final version to draft of the new mm -hmm. version. Is that the first thing you do is look at the. You know, when you start to create the 2023 draft version, you look at the 2022 column for the money you're putting away, and, and you're going to take the replaced fire station roof, and, and you're going to take $4,000 and go put it in column, I think it's T, right. to show that now we have $4,000 put away for that project. Yep. Well... Assuming that they actually put the whole 193 right. or whatever that right. real number is. And if is. they don't, then... Then you have to reallocate have to the re column yeah. 2022. And then this thing for, has to be reallocated. Yeah, you have to reallocate uh, that column before you... We needed 225, you only got 200, how are we going to... Who, who's going to lose out something? Yep. Okay. Yeah. But, but then you have to take those amounts and put them in column T before you change these years. Yeah. So it'll be the it'll be the beginning worksheet for next year's CIP plan. Yeah. It'll be the draft. And that's where we'll see our shortcomings where they fall and you know what we have to bump up for for the following year's mm -hmm. allocations.
So what's the plan for, for now then? Do we want to spend a little more time and then make a suggestion to try and hit the, eight, the, the Wednesday or the Thursday or the Monday as far as a written uh, statement for 2022 purchases and allotments, you know, total amount needed from taxation, and with the promise of getting a 10-year plan drawn up for them? I mean, it's tough because we lose Caroline shortly. Um, I mean, I've done this a few years, but I've never been in your seat. This is your first year in the seat controlling that worksheet. Well, I mean, I, I think I first have to go back and, and make sure I agree with mm -hmm. the stuff all, that the numbers all foot and that I understand. Because so I don't understand it, I'm not going to be able to talk about it. Um, well, should we decide at this meeting that if we want to use a certain portion, any or all of that 99000 to completely take some items off the table as far as purchasing from existing funds? Example being, do we want to completely pay for the wash system, which we don't think is a good idea because there may be other funds? Um, or do we want to completely pay for the greater the amount of 45000 for the exhaust system? Yeah. Yeah. Um, scroll down. What was the other? So I think it would be helpful here? to make a list of what are all the items proposed for 2022 and then are we agreeing out of principle that we ought to do all these things in 2022? And then if so, how much funding do they already have? Right, right. What, what yeah. is the total cost? Yeah, but it starts to... with what, what, are we, what are we even talking about besides the vehicle exhaust system? Right. What other ones are highlighted as you go down, Joe, besides those? That's it. That's and the only two? For 2022. For purchases. For purchases in 2020. Now, there there are the, yeah, for purchases, that's... Everything else is an allocation. And even even though, I mean, it's really only the 75000 Yes, really Because we're putting the wash area in the body count. Yeah, we only need 45 of that. And yes, that, would not, really that would not exhaust our 99000 Well, yeah. and really, if, if you're not, if you're going to take the money out of the vehicle wash area, you really only need 20. Yes, it, it, correct, and that would still leave us a, a, a solid surplus in the CIP. Should things happen with the wash system and the ARPA funding, sure. yeah. you know, we've got that cushion. So I think that is the decision you would enjoy having tonight, what, the, what yeah. this board's feel is on that. Yeah, so it sounds like, to reiterate, we're saying the vehicle wash area, that twenty-five grand should come not be considered as part of SIP. Select board, you you need to deal with this as far as the ARPA, uh, funds. the ARPA funds, the whatever the math is between we should the vehicle exhaust system should be done. We have thirty, and there's, and there's right. Yeah, we have thirty, and it needs seventy-five. And right, and there's some number. I don't know if there's any number on the vehicle. So wash I think system. regardless no. of the vehicle no. wash area, I think it's safe to say we can propose the vehicle exhaust system and tell the board that it can be fully funded. Yes. So I, I think that's, you know... That, right. And it will be some change left over between what comes out of the vehicle wash area, not being part of this, and the money that would come out of that 99000 or whatever surplus. The vehicle wash area would come off the, the 193 that we're asking for. That's where that number would be reduced. No, because that, oh, oh it is, it is, sorry, it is I, it was that, it? I think it is. All right, all right, so I apologize. Can you, can you scroll left on the vehicle wash? Thing? All right, so that, I'm sorry, I, I take it back because I, all right, we have to put money, if we were to do the vehicle wash area, it's not fully funded. I, I don't, I, I misinterpreted that. So, so that can't be put toward the vehicle exhaust system because there's no money on it yet. So that would be money to put on it in 2022. So, so I take that back. Um, still, though, the vehicle exhaust system can be fully funded out of the CIP in 2022 if you want to propose that. To the tune of 45000 Yeah. And yeah. that 25000 that we have set up there to, 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 for the vehicle wash system, that may not be the entire amount that we need to pay once we solve the offer. Well, I, I think there's just so much that's unknown about that because... But we're going into a preparing that we will have to satisfy, and I think that's good. I'd rather see that we're, we're preparing to fully fund, to take care of that ourselves, should things don't work out on the other end. I suppose, but I, I'm, I'm really, um, 
I'm really hopeful that the select board would find a way to honor the permit requirements because it would not be good to report to EPA in at this time next year that they've made no progress except to put money away for it because it's supposed to be completed by June. And I think the danger, a more dangerous situation would be to not have any money funded for it, expecting assistance with the ARPA program, right? And, well, and so have that not happen. The select board has full discretion over those funds. Yeah. And they're qualifying. So, so I, I, don't, I don't see why that shouldn't be possible. Whereas, to keep it in this fund means you know, sure we can put money on it and pay for it and suggest it, in which case through this process it's not getting approved until March and then it has to be done by June. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that's really challenging mm -hmm. and perhaps not realistic. So, so I would just, I think it would be prudent to say to the select board that, um, as a result of, if, if this is what you agree should be said, is that you know, in hearing from the department heads and their presentations and what they feel they need to be purchased in 2022, there are these three items. And, and we, have, we are suggesting to the select board and the police chief that body cameras be handled in the operating budget. We have understand that he is presenting it in that way. Mm -hmm. um, therefore, it, being, it will be removed from this plan. Second, vehicle exhaust system, fully funded, here you go. Then, vehicle wash station, um, while this does you know, qualify as a capital item, um, given that it's due in June, we are hoping that um, you will find a way to use the ARPA funds and get it completed by the deadline, yeah. and, and, then, and then we can remove it from this. Yeah, I, I, and, and you might even, you know, we can choose to put the septic system conversation in that same statement. Um, in hopes that they want to figure out a way to wrap that all together. But in the interest of timeliness, if indeed the ARPA funding program, it takes longer for that to go through its process to, to actually begin breaking. It the really doesn't. And, and oh, that's, okay, I didn't know that. Well, well, right, and that's what's really beautiful about that funding is that we have half of it already. We have one hundred thirty-five thousand dollars from the state, and now we're in the position where we can't use the funds until we identify a qualifying project and have a public hearing, and that the select board votes to use the funds in that way. Um, as a sidebar, the select board has to sign a conflict of interest policy and create policies around seatbelt use for people who drive on the job and, and texting while driving. Pretty, pretty easy lifts, really. They should be able to accomplish that, but they can't actually spend the funds until they have those policies in place. Well, the devil's advocate, why are we even including, including that in here if indeed it's, it's pretty much a given that we're going to get these funds and it's easy to do? I think just to recognize that it has to happen. Like, in, it, I yeah. guess in the spirit of this being the document that kind of catches things that aren't indicated elsewhere, it's just a way to um, bring light to this project. But otherwise, I agree with you. I don't think, you know, this is a planning document for the future, and, mm -hmm. and that's a now. Yeah. So wait, to recap, the vehicle exhaust system we're telling, we're suggesting to the select board, this can be fully funded between what was already set aside plus what the surplus is in the city. And, and I don't think they need that level of detail. Okay. I think they can just know we have started to allocate, you know, funds. I, I don't think they have that level of this spreadsheet knowledge. Okay. I, you know, so, so I, I wouldn't, I mean, if they ask questions, by all means, answer them, but I think um, it, it's kind of brain clutter for them. Yeah, but then the second point I have is that even after you do that, even after we do that, there are going to be excess funds that are not going to be spent in 2022, but, I mean, I don't know if we can suggest this, but we suggest, only because the future is unknown, that we don't treat those funds as, as a negative to what the Warren article should be. I would suggest instead that you discuss these three items and your recommendation for these three items and just otherwise say, we're working on finalizing the spreadsheet and leave it at that. 
And then once you come to a determination about what the spreadsheet looks like, then explain how you got there. Well, we still owe a suggestion on what the Warren article should be for SIP funding for 2020. That's true. And that's but what I'm saying, that we do all of this stuff. This. So I guess what I'm saying is, suggest the three items in, their, in their, the variety of how you're going to say that, and then say, um, we are still working on the spreadsheet to determine what the annual request for funding should be, and we'll get back to you about that shortly. And for what are we putting away every year? Mm -hmm. So I think that's your first step. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then that'll change all your bottom lines. And then maybe it won't really be as wonky as it appears right now. Yeah. And then if it is, then you can see if there's anything you can do about that. Yeah. Beautiful. All right. um, so Joe, can you write that up in an email? Here are the three things that we are suggesting you purchase by these different methods. And we're requesting 200, and then also the equipment, I think is six, we're asking for six to be put into the equipment fund for, for future purposes, per, um, purchases, but not for anything this year. Okay, so. All the way at the bottom. Yeah, yeah, but what was the three? That vehicle exhaust. So, so, so the body room? cameras through the operating budget. Right. And then the roof. Right. Um, funded, exhaust system funded. Right. Oh, and then the wash station, so there's four items. Um, and then yeah. talk about the wash station to please use ARPA funds and get that done. Yeah. Right. And the other two purchases besides the body cameras, one's operating budget and the other two were taken care of through the CIP. Oh, you're just talking about in general for the 2022 stuff. Yes, yeah, so just yeah, yeah. summarize just 2022 for them. Even, you know, regardless of the funding source, these are the topics that came so up. these are the four here. Yes, okay. and this is how we're suggesting that you address each of these four. But not really regardless of the funding source, because two, two of them don't need any money. Well... Well, I, I guess helping them understand yes. our process and how we yes. came to understand okay. these to be the four items for this year and what we suggest you do about them. But I'd like them not to see that we're asking for $75,000 for an exhaust system because we, we've handled We're funding it, we've sure. Right, but they do need to know it costs seventy five dollars so that they're, yeah. 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 All right, so I'll, I'll do, I'll take it, I'll send it to the group here for, mm -hmm. this is a draft. All right. That would be great, thank you. And that's good, that gets them the information that really is critical to give them that much more lead time mm -hmm. to do their degree. So, do we still want to get together just to go over whatever changes here, or is this enough? Whatever you would like to do, uh, it can be available. All right, let me let me take a crack at. Mm -hmm. I think there's less of a rush about that. <coughs> but it would be important for this committee to agree with whatever you're suggesting, or just sort of understand that you know what's going on, and maybe see something that you don't see. Yeah. Or you know at least understand for themselves so that they can bring it back to their respective committees so that you can formally say this is the CIP committee's right. final version. If you make the bottom line, you know, instead of the 183, 173, 200, and, you, and we can see where the math came from, I mean, we all, we talked about that, so we'll understand that. We understand the four items for purchase and how they're being paid for or where the money's coming from. And like I said, the only thing we're on the hook for is 2022. That's really the only, you know, binding data. Right, so there are, there are those four items that need to be explained, and then that bottom line, the, basically what is the that one Warren article? article? Well, in the second Warren article, underneath that, they need to know that we would request that they put $6,000 okay. in the equipment fund as well. Good. Yeah. And make sure that 182 reflects the fact that that 20000 is not. Yep. Yeah. Well, and let it not be 182, but find a way to make it 200. 200, 200. Yes. Right. That's what I mean. Yeah. Up, up the allotments to looking at, you know, what's the more pending year of purchase or, or the bigger ticket items. Okay. But I think that I can make that pretty succinct I, uh, with yeah. that stuff. And then, you know, if we think there's a need to, uh, does everybody have Excel? You want to look at what's yeah, here? If I can look at it and, and knowing that we had this conversation, I can draw on this conversation. Yeah. I mean, I can shoot an email back and... Uh, well, so, so hold the phone. 
He'll go to jail for that. Yes. Well, that's a mean no, that's not really. yes. why, why don't we just set a time? Do you want to just so so? Points? I think there's value in sending the group. This is what I have so far. Let's meet on Thursday and discuss it. Yeah. You know, and that way at least people can look at it and review it and know what they want to talk about on Thursday. That's perfectly yeah, clean. Totally. Just not to talk back and say. You know, what were you intending with column J, yeah. or I don't agree with your total, like, like save all that for the meeting. Yep. So, next Wednesday, or you said Thursday? So, um, oh, the select board meetings too, going on. Later. So the select board is oh, meeting on, okay. well, all right, so the, their meeting schedules are getting really full. So Monday's a holiday, Tuesday's planning board, Wednesday's select board, and now Thursday's the stormwater committee meeting. So. What I would suggest is um, any one of those dates is fine. You're just not meeting in this room. And so there are only three of you. Well, I think you I can perfectly well meet like across the hand. hall. Yeah. So I think it's, it's open to you whatever night you want to you wanna be here. Can also you? note that this, the, the planning board doesn't meet until 7. So depending on when you want to meet. Yeah, I think if we can't use this, then uh, we can get this printed out. If I have it enough in advance, or if you email it to Chuck okay. rather than me, um, and that's Chuck dot G O E L L E R. That's the whole world. Right? Yep. G O E L L E R. Yes. Okay. Great. So I'll get the email out. I'll this will take. I'll see how tomorrow goes. But I'll work on this. Get this out. We can. Any, well, then I guess we're talking. What what day do you want to meet? So I would go before the plan. I, I got planning at seven, but I could I could meet at six thirty on Tuesday. If you think I have an hour, I'll do it. I, I kind of don't. But so um, if you're meeting next week, please email me to ask for copies because. Um, just, just, you know, for as long as I'm here, it would be easier for me rather than him to figure out how to do the loan. Okay. I don't know if he knows how to do that, so I'll have to teach him anyway, but, um... What about your schedule next weekend? I have school board Thursday. Other than that, I'm open. But Tuesday or Thursday probably aren't best because we would have conference. Right, so it looks like Wednesday, and okay. select board will be here and you can be across the hall. Yeah. Um, which means you definitely need printouts, and, yeah. that's, and that's okay. So that's 9, 8, 6, 30, okay? I mean, it's, it's our call. But I can, does this six. have to be a public meeting? And everything? Oh, wait. Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> I'm sorry, so, Kevin, 6, 30? Um, it's 6, 6, 30. We're talking the 8th, right? Yeah. Yeah, I can do either of those times. Okay. 6, 30? Sure. Okay. 6, 30, CIP. Okay, I will post it. Very good. So I'm going to leave the door across the hall open. Uh -huh. Just make yourselves at home in there. I'll be in here. Okay. But I'll leave printouts in there so you'll have what you need. And I'll get it out to everybody beforehand. So if you want to look at it at home and see the formulas that are in here. and I think, it, I think we went through enough. You'll get a sense of of what I was trying to do. So this was helpful I, just from that standpoint. Yeah. Great. All right, call Very us good. to an end. Yeah. You two you lovebirds all set back there? Oh, we're, wa we're yes. wonderful. Meeting adjourned. No comment. <laughs> <laughs>